Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, power armor people, powered people, and super powered people, and people in power. And welcome to Go Start Making Stuff, where there is time for exoskeleton building time. So, what you need is jugs, bolts, angle whatever 3d printed 45 degree angle things uh, 40 millimeter aluminium profile these window uh, things self drilling uh, steel roof bolts or screws or whatever they are need um, spike things and the uh, fanny packs and uh, a 3d printer this is my delta and if you have one bigger ones for sale i'm very interested parts and stuff so we're starting here by cutting this aluminium frames here into the correct size with this angle grinder that i have on the stand so it will get 90 degrees it didn't really work perfectly but uh, well you see here we have a bunch of aluminium frame parts here which I'm have measured out uh, in a pattern like uh, this I'm showing here to have it on my back uh, so it can be and I did I did remove the part that is going to be on the, the lower part of the back because I didn't notice I couldn't walk around so now they take this window angle things here and now we have this motorcycle gear here which I'm going to attach like this so you actually can have some flex in your back. And now I'm cutting these frames here. And this is completely optional because I noticed, which you will see later, that I could uh, not really use the gun properly when I had this frame here. But if you want to use this technique to build something even bigger and sturdier and bulkier, go ahead and use this. So you see, this is the... the um, the part that will make you know it's fold over itself here so now i have the angles here which i'm putting it together and i have the you know it's gonna rest on the shoulders so it can be folded uh, hinges is the word i was looking for there uh, so you can have this over your uh, chest part so you see now when i have attached these they can you know are good you have to measure this a lot of times so it will be absolutely 90 degree straight or else it would work properly this is a part which they use for building fences um, to you know uh, put some um, some uh, tension to them but that's going to be used so the arms can actually move around quite good so you see that we go there and now I have the arms can actually be moved in all directions because that is a very difficult thing we do things it's now I'm 3d printing these uh, 45 degree angles here which I'm putting on the chest uh, folder thing and uh, also that I am going to put on the hips so you see here now I have put them all together like that and I also use this uh, nail strips here so I can attach them properly so they will not you know release from each other it's a good way to make them extra secure and strong because when things move around it's um, have a lot of stress on them in the end and things with lots of moving parts is a bit of a pain that's why this video is delayed almost a year from its finishing state because uh, it ended up not in the movie it was supposed to be in because they they changed their mind anyway so now you see here we have a um, the hips there and now I have the legs so you see they have double joints here not one they're actually double the on the upside and downside there they will go so they can move around so now we're gonna put all these things with bolts here also the arm pieces so we will do a first test and see if this can actually be moved around in, in a good way so now I'm putting these things on here and you see you have the on the, the, the motorcycle gear there you will have on uh, to your m stomach it will turn around so it will actually release some tension to it also and I use tape here just to see that it will work properly with this gear thing so now you see here now you do have a lot of range of movement 
So you also have to learn to walk in this because it feels restricted, but it's actually not really restricted. So you see, you can do some dance moves in this. So now I'm using my my jugs here with wiper fluids because they are fantastic uh, to make some interesting looking shoulder things. So I'm just going to cut them out like this and you see there we have two 90 degree angle brackets there and I'm going to attach them to this. This is actually two of these layered on top there. Uh, some parts I forgot to film because this was made under extreme stress back then and now I try to patch this together is good. This is a completely optional thing, but it's a important detail that is actually fake batteries that I have in pouches on my hips there. Something that will power the exoskeleton so you can move around it. So you see yes, just dummy things that it will look okay. And now I'm having this thick plastic thing here because the arms was a little bit too short as you saw when I walked around there. So now we have extended these here. So now you see you'll also put a little bit of a tactical rail there to attach things onto the exoskeleton like a you know, wrist computer and stuff like that. Now you see it's finished here but this is the foot which I have 3D printed with flexible material here. This is a very very uh, difficult uh, things to do but I think you can do this with a proper shoe also and some EVA foam. But you see I have a, um, a hinge there and also bolts so it can move both ways. So this is the flexible TPU material so I have 3D printed and I will share the files for this in case you want to make something similar by yourself here because the parts is just basically cosmetic. Um, but I'm going to do a separate episode on the the fake hydraulic stuff things. So you see I have it up there the hinges on the chest things there and it actually fell onto my head and hit myself with it so that's also a downside of having these. But you see this is like the first proper test with uh, almost all the parts on it and I also have this uh, tactical um, leg things where you can attach things to which I bought just to have something that attaches to your thighs. So you see now the whole thing is as basic as it can. All the parts after this test here will be cosmetic in any shape or form. And the, the, the chest plate will be removed. So you see I just have uh, to attach them to my arms. There is just some uh, nylon straps but I then ended up using this kind of wrist uh, roller skate uh, protection things. So now you see, uh, now you actually can move and you see the the joints are bending in the wrong way there but that will be fixed uh, with uh, when we put on the fanny packs. And now you see we take the gun here and you see it will be difficult to hold this in a natural way that's why it has to be removed. Because being able to aim with a gun when you're a soldier in a power armor it's very good. So this is just me walking around in the small space I have to walk around here because it's quite messy at the moment in the workshop here. But yeah, so you see, that's the best way we can do with this, I guess, on the very minuscule budget this was made on. But it's uh, it is a very complicated thing. Also the shoulders have some TPU parts which I have slided on there also which I forgot to mention but that's just to hide the details of the the part for fencing there yes. So there you see we have some just some details to have this uh, tube here to imagine that it all the electricity is going through it and other um, pipes that needs to go to the hydraulic systems in this because um, the director said oh I want hydraulic things on it that moves around so I said yeah sure I will try my best to do something to simulate that. So now you see I'm putting the funny packs above all the joint parts here just to hide them in our recipe. Here we have the parts there. So this the giant hose goes in there and you have holes for the bolt here and this just snaps on to a 40 millimeter uh, pi, um, squared uh, beam. So you see all the p 
pockets and stuff are being put on here like the the backpack that will actually hold the shoulders on this thing so you can have them on your shoulders also so from this part here we're just gonna put on the the pipes here and the, the pockets on top of it so the, that part will not be seen very much but you know some somewhere you have to put the hoses on so now you just go on the inside of the fanny pack here which will just hold them to, and actually make them bend in the right way it's a bit of a tricky thing here but these fanny packs were I had a lot of them because they were very very cheap and I just put them on I thought I'd spend like a dollar or something on them or I get them for free and anyway, we had like several of them so something they should be used on. Here we have the hydraulic things here as you see they move around there but I will do a specific episode on fake hydraulics that will uh, look cool because this is actually more complicated than it looks like even though it looks simple that's usually with lots of things when they look simple you put a lot of work to them to work reliably so now we have painted all this here in the flat black and I'm starting to have a little bit of sandpaper here to expose a little bit of the metal here because uh, in the movie this has been used um, for some time in the battle the movie it had ended up not being in but anyway so now you see it's just a hundred grade sandpaper or something being used here and you see now it's black very 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 black and suddenly details from space so this is just a sponge pot here we're just robbing this whole thing in here so they will look a little bit else. this is also a 3d file i am um, designed to slide over all the bolts and things and actually snap on to the bolts so they you know can be easily removed if they have to yeah so there we go the first layer there now we're gonna do the clothes here so they will also match so i have this uh, uh wood shopping equipment here with a lot of oil and things so we're just gonna rob that into that so we get the dirt and the oil and stuff so it also will not uh flush away in case they will film in uh, in rain so it will still be there so it, it's gonna be properly dirty but uh, we can also seal it with a uh, hairspray. So now I'm just cleaning off my dad's car here with his clothes to get them properly dirty. That is a very good way to make it genuinely dirty looking. As you see, it is white. And now I have mixed up here brown paint with water and in a spraying bottle and I use this to catch it so you don't have you know brown paint everywhere so you're just spraying against this on the other side and it needs to be quite wet uh, because so we are going to actually take advantage of that in a moment so now you see I'm just wiping the most big and obvious part of hair that looks like it has been sprayed but still it needs to be quite wet and also we're gonna do the same thing with the clothes here uh, be sure to have your floor protected with a floor protector 9000 so you see we have the the helmets and the clothes and the pockets and everything here and also a little bit of wiping might be because now we have a pencil here no sorry brush and ash from the wood stove because we're heating the house with wood here so you see i'm just gonna uh, paint that on so it will actually stick onto the white uh, wet paint this will be very very dusty but uh, don't worry about it and uh, also now you see here it's the power fist thing where i have painted a little bit on uh, that was actually a completely optional thing which I forgot to film a lot of the construction but uh, I think we can do a separate episode of this thing here but you know you see it actually does this Ta-da! and now we're gonna use hairspray with uh, glue in it this is a very high grade glue thing I bought this in the supermarket and it's a um, it's a very very gluey uh, hairspray and this is just gonna be used as a lacquer paint to seal the 
the ash from coming off again and it's completely translucent so it will not show up like a shiny uh, surface so you see here now I take the ash on all the clothes also and you're going to hairspray this also but you see you can actually use a lot more ash on the clothes because they will soak it up in a completely different way So you see, now I'm taking the hairspray there on everything. But it also smells quite nice after this. Now, I can do a whole separate episode of this part also here, but this is basically how to make uh, consistent dirt uh, makeup, which uh, I looked up dirt makeup and uh, it cost like a hundred dollars for like a small pack, but you can just take some uh, you know soil from your outside environment and put this together with vaseline and a little bit of brown makeup there and you will get fantastically good uh, mud that will look consistently wet constantly because it's grease so now i'm just gonna put this on the uh, some parts of this hair that looks like it has been you know not properly um, cleaned off after being in the forest for a long time and collected some mud. So this is fat and soil basically. Everything of this will, you know, add quality to this thing. So now you see this is almost a completely finished state of the costume here it probably has you see there we have the ash now you see how good it looks everything just pops and looks you know used and so you can go out and take some nice pictures of yourself in the weather where the camouflage actually matches the outside because at the moment is so much snow outside But anyway, I hope you find this interesting. And now some final word from myself. So, I hope you all find this quite informative with the complicated power armor suit building here. But uh, it took about a year to get this video out, but uh, here it is. And also, we have Malfan. Ta da! Power Fest!